Hello, 2200mile.com readers, all 20 of you. This is Chris reporting to you live from Damascus, Virginia, where I've backtracked about 140 miles to be a part of Trail Days, the biggest festival related to the Appalachian Trail. Uh, what I thought I'd finally do is let you see what gear I've been using that's got me through these first 600 miles. Um, I will be switching a lot of it out for lighter weight uh, gear that's more appropriate for summer type temperatures, but this gear is more, well, it kept me warm through some pretty cold temperatures. So without further ado, let's take a, a tour of my crib. First we have the MSR Hubba Hubba, a two-person tent that I rarely use because I prefer sleeping in shelters. Therefore, I've got it for sale for some lucky person or persons hiking together who want a two-person tent. Great price. Inside we have my sleeping bag, which is the Big Agnes Mystic. It's rated for uh, 15 degrees, so it definitely will keep you warm uh, most nights on the trail. I was had to layer up a few nights to keep warm, but overall it's a nice, down, warm bag. Underneath is the uh, insulated pad. The pad actually is integrated into the sleeping bag, which is unique to Big Agnes. That way you never slide off of your sleeping pad. So that's the Big Agnes. Alright, over here on this picnic table I've strewn about all my other gear. Let's talk about clothes first. Uh, I've been using Mountain Hardware rain pants and rain jacket. Uh, depending on the weather, sometimes if it's too hot, you don't even bother wearing it because you would end up just sweating the same amount. Uh, but in the cold or wind, it does a great job keeping you dry and warm. Uh, the rest of the clothing, it's all about layering. Layering to stay warm. So this is a pair of uh, long underwear. This is just a typical pair of running shorts. I have way too many bandanas, so I'll probably cut some of that weight for the summer. Uh, a couple special <laughs> pairs of underwear. Um, and then a toque for you northerners and an ear thing because my toque's not big enough to carry, cover my ears. Uh, next to the layers is the top. This is not cotton. This phrase is cotton kills, so you never want to wear cotton clothes while you're hiking, especially during the cold. But this is polyester. Uh, so you've got a t-shirt for your base layer. Um, you've got a Patagonia Capilene layer 1. Uh, cap 2. This is a little warmer, and then finally the warmest part is this marmot uh, jacket. It's a very soft fleece lined, very warm. It's as warm as a fleece jacket or a down jacket, especially when you have all those layers underneath. Next are, I carry four pair of socks, which is probably also too many. Um, if you like compartmentalizing, you would love hiking because you get to stuff all of your different types of gear into stuffed sacks. It makes it very fun to, uh, to uh, compartmentalize your life away. Also part of the uh, gear, most people carry camp shoes so that when you get to camp at night you take off your hiking boots or shoes. Um, these are my customized Crocs. I cut off the top so that my feet could breathe better. These are called gaiters. You slip these on over your boots while you're hiking. Uh, this goes underneath and this keeps debris, junk, leaves, sticks, twigs from entering your socks and shoes. Very helpful. Next is my cooking gear. I've got an REI cook pot with a little spoon and a spatula. It's sitting on top of my homemade tuna can stove. Punched a bunch of holes in a tuna can. What you do is, this is not Gatorade, this is denatured alcohol. Pour an ounce or two of that in there. Use the metal foil to block the wind. It'll bring um, a couple cups of water to boil in no time. One of my most common meals on the trail are these pasta sides and uh, throw in some tuna for protein. It's a great meal at the end of a long day of hiking. All of uh, the metal, the stove, the lighter, they all fit inside the pot which fits inside its own little bag. Perfect. Uh, next on the tour let's talk about my pack. I've been using the Osprey Aether 70. It's a 72 liter which is a pretty big pretty big pack. I'm downgrading for summer. And then I also have an REI rain cover to keep everything inside dry. I've tried a pack towel the couple, past couple days. Um, some places you stay don't have towels if you want to take a shower or if you find a swimming hole. Uh, it it's works good so far. It's really light, so 
easy to justify carrying that. Next are trekking poles. Almost everyone carries some sort of walking stick or trekking pole so that you, uh, you've got four feet on the ground as opposed to two and you rarely fall all the way down because you're able to distribute some of your weight onto the trekking poles. Uh, next let's talk about my water system. I'm carrying a Katahdin Hiker Pro filter. Um, you've got one hose. This goes into the dirty stream or puddle, whatever you happen to find. And then out the top comes the clean water. This is the pumping mechanism here. And you have this clean hose that you keep in a bag to keep it from cross-contaminating. And clean water comes out of that. You can pump it directly into what I have here as a Camelback 2.1 liter uh, bladder that stays inside the pack. And I use this platypus 4 liter bag to actually just at the end of the day go down to the creek or whatever and fetch four liters of water, bring it back to the shelter and just uh, I filter, just put filter directly out of there. That's my system for now. Last but not least are toiletries and accessories I guess you'd call them. I'm carrying my journal which I keep a log of daily miles and thoughts. I have my, the president of the organization I work for, I have sections of his book that I carry so this is uh, Rich Stern's Hole in the Gospel, and that happens to be part three. Uh, most people carry some sort of headlamp to read at night or if you end up hiking late to, to be able to see at the dark. This is the guidebook, which uh, tells you um, mile for mile where you're at, what's next, and for example a shelter, this tells you that there's a privy and a water source and the shelter sleeps eight. So that's how you know where you're at on the trail. Next are, this is my first aid kit, which thankfully I haven't had to use. Um, sunscreen, neosporin type things, foot cream, camp suds, and stuff for blisters. Next is the uh, washing your hands after you use the bathroom. Uh, this is my electronics bag with my MP3 player, extra batteries, and extra battery for my cell phone and the video camera I'm currently holding. Uh, these next two luxury items are probably a little too big. Uh, powder for well, to keep you dry and from chafing, and deodorant from, well, keeping you smelling as good as possible while sweating all day. Yes, I do brush my teeth every day with this nice travel size toothpaste, toothbrush, and floss. Last but not least, uh, vitamin I, otherwise known as ibuprofen, vitamin P, Pepto-Bismol, some vitamins and some uh, joint type supplements, and some, uh, wet ones to keep you clean. So that is my gear. That's what I've carried so far. Again, I'm probably going to be uh, I'm selling my tent and sending some of the stuff home in order to shed weight. Bless you. Bless you. Shed weight um, and hike more efficiently, safer, and faster, hopefully. So thanks for taking a look at my gear and uh, see you on the website. Yeah, I almost forgot my feed bag, how I got my name. Um, normally, this pack is strapped to the top of your pack, but instead I carry it at chest level, strapped to the front, so that I can carry breakfast, some snacks, some lunch. If I don't feel like taking off my pack to eat, I can just keep walking and eat on the go. So that's my feed bag.